On today's episode, we are getting into the latest space news, including SpaceX adds a hot staging ring to Booster 9 and a lunar lander prototype is spotted. Meanwhile, Russia's Luna 25 slams into the moon and Blue Origin shows off the inside of their New Glenn rocket factory. This is the Space Race. Starbase Boca Chica has been seeing some intense work towards the next Starship test flight over the last few weeks, including an impressive test of the new Deluge system during a static fire test on August 6th. But while all of this work seems to point to a quickly approaching test launch date, one major piece of equipment was nowhere to be seen, the interstage vent ring for the booster that would allow for hot staging during this next flight. But on August 18th, that changed with some images from the SpaceX Twitter feed showing the installation of the vented interstage ring on Booster 9. Hot staging is a separation maneuver where some or all of the second stage engines on a rocket ignite before it disconnects from the first stage booster. This allows for a gentler separation with more control, but requires some additional venting and shielding to work without destroying the entire vehicle. Russia's Proton rockets are a great example of this technique in practice. Not long after the explosive fire test flight of Starship on April 20th, CEO Elon Musk mentioned that SpaceX was going to be moving towards this method of separation for their super heavy vehicle in a Twitter Spaces interview, but we had no idea when that would actually be. At the time, the Boca Chica technicians and engineers were busy fixing the damage from the flight, so there really wasn't much indication that this change was a particularly high priority for the company. But on July 1st, Chris Bergen from NASA Spaceflight posted these images of the quick disconnect being reattached to the upper arm of the launch tower at Starbase. It was clear that the arm had been raised a bit, which could only mean that SpaceX was intending on having hot staging ready for the second test. From then on, observers kept a close eye on the vehicle bays on site, hoping to catch a glimpse of some prototype so we could begin making estimations about its function. But in a rare bit of showmanship, SpaceX ended up giving us our first look, and not only that, but with humans for scale. From the looks of things, this ring seems to be around two and a half meters tall or so, and sits right on top of the original top of Booster 9. It has some pretty generous vent areas, and weirdly, a cone-shaped shield instead of a dome. Hot staging shields are normally a dome, so the engines near the center can flare outwards properly, but it looks like SpaceX is intending for the first run at least, to use only the outer three Raptor vacuum engines to start the separation, rather than lighting the three inner sea level ones as well. This is probably more to do with the gimbal capabilities of the inner engines more than anything. Sea level Raptors are very powerful and being so close to the shield likely made the engineers nervous, but the vacuum Raptors should have more than enough power to pull the upper stage away from the booster without their help. So, Aside from the pending results of the FAA investigation into the first test flight, Starship seems just about ready for the next test flight, which means the production crew can start sinking their teeth into other projects. Projects like the human landing system. On August 12th, the repurposed nose cone of Ship 22 was ferried out of the mid-bay at Boca Chica and moved to the payload processing facility just down the road. The nose cone had been under various modifications for over a month at this point, leading several members of the community to speculate that SpaceX might be using it as a base to mock up a new prototype of the HLS. Several different internal rigs were seen being added to the vehicle, and a door was added on the side, but everything was ambiguous until it was rolled out of hiding on August 12th. From the images, you can plainly see that some electrical connection points along the bottom were marked HLS, and honestly, that's really all we need. It's not overly likely Ship 22 will become a fully functioning prototype for SpaceX's lander, but it is important that they are getting started on construction tests now. The uncrewed test flight for HLS is currently scheduled for 2024, and we haven't seen any other indications that the team is any further along on this project than the glimpse of the old S-22 nose. The HLS is slated to land a NASA crew of astronauts on the south pole of the moon in December 2025 as part of the Artemis 3 mission, but if there are any more holdups with Starship, that may have to be postponed. 
Not that SpaceX seems to have any intention of letting that happen, of course. The speed of their repairs to the launch pad at Boca Chica, the testing of their new Deluge system, and the work being done on their test vehicles all points to an incredibly experienced and capable team. Still, it's all riding on this next test flight, so let's hope the FAA doesn't have any surprises for SpaceX. As we look to the future, envisioning people setting foot on Mars to live, we also find ourselves grappling with a challenge here on Earth. An overwhelming media landscape packed with bias and sensationalism, it's tough to navigate through the digital news realm, where profits often take precedence over accuracy, making it a struggle to find trustworthy space-related content. How I combat these issues is by using a website and app called Ground News, which is founded by Harleen Kaur, a former NASA engineer. And what I love about them is that you can customize your newsfeed to suit your interests, and for me, that means staying up to date on space exploration, SpaceX, and NASA. They do all the heavy lifting of compiling all the world's media in one place, allowing you to compare coverage from different sources to see a variety of perspectives. From there, we found this article about President Biden deciding to keep Space Command in Colorado. With just a quick glance, we can see which news outlets reported it and where they stand on the political spectrum. If you scroll down, you can get a deep dive into the event's accuracy. The coverage we found scored an impressive 81% for high factual content, and if you want to know more, just click to see the detailed breakdown of publications with low, mixed, or high factuality ratings. Another great feature is being able to compare headlines from different political spectrums to see how a story is being framed. Take for example this story from Malay Mail leaning right highlighting Alabama's abortion laws. Then ABC News leaning left talks about Biden keeping Space Command in Colorado, sparking outrage in Alabama's Tuberville. And finally, a center publication with a headline stating Biden to keep Spacecom headquarters in Colorado without mentioning the abortion laws. For me, reading the latest space news has gotten much quicker and more reliable with sources all in one place. So go to the link ground.news slash space race in the description to get unlimited access. Russia's ambitious attempt to get their Luna 25 mission to land a robotic vehicle on the moon without support from their former international partners has ended in failure. On August 20th, Roscosmos confirmed that they had lost contact with their Luna Glob lander earlier on August 19th, and that the cause of the signal loss was that their device switched to an off-design orbit and ceased to exist as a result of a collision with the lunar surface. Which is probably the most blunt way we've ever heard someone announce the loss of a spacecraft. Luna 25 launched on a Soyuz rocket from the Cosmodrome in Russia just short of two weeks ago on August 10th. The plan was to use a more direct route to get their vehicle in orbit around the moon and put their lander down on the South Pole at the same time as the Indian Chandrayaan-3 lander on August 21st. This fast approach called for a more aggressive maneuver to achieve orbit once inside the moon's sphere of influence, but the Russian team seemed confident that they could pull it off. Roscosmos is one of the most experienced space agencies in the world, after all. However, at around 7 p.m. EST on August 19th, something went wrong. We're still unsure of what exactly happened. Roscosmos either isn't telling us or isn't sure themselves yet. But what we do know is that as the upper stage of Luna 25 approached the planned maneuver time, it suddenly stopped receiving orders. The pre-landing burn that should have put the vehicle into a shallow orbit instead ended up pointing it directly at the moon. Gravity and inertia took care of the rest. Luna 25 was the first Russian mission to the moon since 1976. It was originally planned as a joint operation with the ESA until Russia attacked Ukraine and the Europeans pulled out of the mission. From there, Roscosmos faced an uphill climb to get Luna 25 ready for launch, but it looks like it wasn't enough. It's really hard to say exactly why this happened. Sure, we could chalk this up to some hasty planning, bad materials, or rushed construction, but there have been a rash of missions to the moon that have failed recently. For example, iSpace lost their Hakuto R lander just last month, NASA lost their Lunar Flashlight Orbiter as well, so it's not an easy thing to set a vehicle down on the moon. That being said, it seems difficult to not believe this is the result of losing international support. Luna 25 was supposed to be the first of several missions that would get Russia back into the international sphere of spacefaring nations. 
They could even have joined the Artemis missions or helped out with China's attempts to get to the moon. This isn't the end by any stretch. Roscosmos is likely still working on Luna 26 and beyond, but this is a reminder that no one should be thinking of a moon landing as easy. If Roscosmos can mess up an uncrewed landing, then so could the ESA or NASA. We have a lot of careful work ahead of us. A rare look inside of the New Glenn rocket factory in Florida was provided to us by the Blue Origin Instagram account on August 15th. The post reads, New Glenn hardware is stacking up in Florida, and the image shows what is presumably the factory floor strewn with rocket parts in various stages of completion. Semi-constructed fuselage rings and tank domes can be seen in the central area, while more delicate parts seem to be sectioned off on the left-hand side, and a large tank assembly is seen taking up a run of the right-hand portion of the image, just below the second and third floor office spaces. This sort of ordered chaos with parts, scaffolding, cranes, and lifts is all very similar to what we see on a larger scale at the SpaceX facility in Boca Chica, except more sterile. Blue Origin has the benefit of a small enclosed space to build in, and it certainly looks like they're getting a lot of work done. The New Glenn is Blue Origin's heavy lift reusable rocket concept, and despite the delays in its development, NASA has already signed up the rocket for its commercial fleet through December 2027, which basically means that NASA is allowing Blue Origin to compete for contracts with the New Glenn until that date. It's supposed to make its debut flight sometime in 2024, but before this image was released, many people in the industry weren't confident they could make that happen. We haven't heard much about the New Glenn lately, despite hearing about missions being planned for the vehicle like NASA's Mars contracts. The problem is that NASA often makes proposals for missions using vehicles that are only in the design phase. They have to do that because they're planning for missions that are often decades in the future, so it's not necessarily an indicator of anything, really. But this post by Blue Origin changes that. Showing off the interior of their manufacturing facility is shorthand for, we're on schedule. No one brags when they're behind, and they certainly don't post pictures of their partially ready rocket without having a good reason. We said earlier that this looks very similar to the images we often see of the SpaceX crew assembling their starships, and that's more than just because they're both rockets. Once all the parts are fabricated, it doesn't take very long for the SpaceX crew to assemble a whole new vehicle, and we have to assume Blue Origin has similar capabilities. We could be only months away from seeing an upright New Glenn with its outer hull intact getting ready for a static fire. It may take most of the year to get it done, but it seems pretty likely that we're actually going to see New Glenn fly by the end of 2024. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.